This is how I made the hardest level in Geometry Dash in 27 objects. To make this level, I had to use quite a few crazy techniques, so make sure to stick around. This is Matt Mart, and he thinks I can't make a top 1 level that has less objects than this, which only has 29 objects, but I'm going to prove him wrong. Here's how. I started with this 3 object setup that moves the block up every time you click, but that's still a hefty amount of objects to copy and paste. So what's my solution? All I have to do is sacrifice 3 objects to make a spawn trigger loop, which would move the wall every second to make infinite gameplay. This makes the total 6 objects, and we already have a pretty difficult level. But this is Geometry Dash we're talking about, and you can go through half of the wall's hitbox before you die. But luckily, I have an idea. Every time you click, one point is added to the total count. With this, we can easily set the number of clicks we want instead of hoping it won't go over 15. But why is that important? The maximum number of clicks a human can do in a second is roughly 15. And no, I'm not talking about drag clicking, because last time, my entire comment section made fun of me for that. And those comments weren't the only ones, as Madmar messaged me saying that I'd never be able to finish this. So... How this works is that when one collision block hits the other, it sends the second to the shadow realm and a few blocks out of the player. And with this setup, we can make the gameplay loop without a spawn trigger, allowing for infinite gameplay. Until the gameplay absolutely disintegrates after a few minutes, but we don't talk about that. The way the game knows if you suck at spam is by checking every second if you're beneath the required count. If you don't have enough clicks, this block will kidnap you and your entire family. His name's Kevin. But if you want to be able to spam, unlike me, you can consider hitting the subscribe button. Not that it actually does anything, this I'm going to be jumping over one spike for every subscriber I get until the end of the year. We're at over 500 from the last video, so let's keep it going. Here's the thing though, you can jump over these collision blocks and beat the level with ease, and I can't have Matmar noticing that. So to avoid any seeking players, I made it so jumping over these blocks would be harder than touching grass. I also added this click counter because otherwise, the player had no idea how many times they've clicked. While this isn't necessary, I don't want the gameplay to be as unreadable as Slaughterhouse. With that, I had the part finished. I decided to call up one of my friends to see what his stats were on the level so far. And this is what happened. King 16 CPS, which is very similar to last time. That was crazy. I feel like I could do that with <laughs> <laughs> Can you give your final thoughts before I show you it? Like Matt said in the last video, you need to touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> to put this absurd challenge into scale, I've used 14 objects already, which is over half of the limit, only in one part. This was gonna be harder than I thought. As I remembered what Matmar had said earlier, I moved on to the next challenge. Geometry Dash has a huge problem. This is the third variant, a level with 360 FPS frame perfects, meaning you have one frame to jump. For this level to be completed, the verifier had to spend months grinding, but it was eventually completed. Except that's not true in the slightest. The level wasn't legitimately verified, but no hacks were used here either. In reality, what happened? Well, Geometry Dash has a bug where the game can sometimes just forget that you're playing on 360 FPS and make the game run at 60 FPS. Normally, this would make the level impossible. Right? Well, no. Somehow, the level was possible with the bug, and the verify completed this without knowing this was even a thing. And to compensate for this bug that shouldn't even be possible, I came up with a solution that would change everything. It would blow away Matt Mar himself. What if, instead, I used collision blocks instead of spikes? I already had a collision system from the previous parts, I just needed to change it up slightly so it would work. So, every time you hit this collision trigger, the jump has moved a few blocks ahead. With this, we can now make players suffer for eternity. To complete this part, you'd have to do 14 of these in a row, just to pass the shortest part of the level. I don't think this actually solves the issue in the slightest, but just pretend I look cool and smart. Sadly, this part isn't as hard as the third variant, as it's 4 frame perfect short. However, the next part cement that this is truly the hardest level ever made, and also some of the worst gameplay ever made. However, it was getting late, so I decided to go to bed to finally finish off the level the next day. But before I did that, I called up my friend Frosted to see what his stats were on the level. Every 16 um, clicks, it like changes. It's not 16, it's 15, but... So, basically... Why are you 16, bum? What are your thoughts on the level so far? 
looks pretty hard. With the green light from Frosted, I went to bed. This is the last day. After that, the level is going to be at the fate of Matt Moore himself. I planned to create a wave corridor that would move alongside the player. The setup only used 5 objects, which is great, except it isn't. My object limit was approaching fast, and I needed every one of them to serve a purpose. But to be honest, this gameplay sucks, as opposed to the other parts. So I decided to scrap the last part entirely, even if it was the last day of the challenge. I couldn't let Matt Moore down. But after talking with one of my friends about how difficult this challenge was to do, I got the perfect idea. What if the player had to click a certain amount of times in, for example, a 30 second window? While this was almost the same setup as the beginning, it allowed me to save a bunch of objects, which is perfect. After toggling off the last part and adding this trigger that requires you to click 300 times, I finished this setup in one object. I have no idea how that's even possible, but I'll roll with it. But the thing is, the level ends at the third part, due to there not being any more objects past that point. So I had to add a trigger at the end, which finished the last part's setup in only two objects. At 24 objects, I had the gameplay complete, except the level was really bland, even more boring than every Slaughterhouse remake. Like seriously, we have enough of these. So I set out to make the most memorable and beautiful decoration possible, the greatest piece of art you've ever seen, with hours of blood, sweat, and tea, or just steal this background from another low object level. I also added a color trigger that slowly changes the level's color throughout the level. Let me know if you noticed it throughout the video. But the time had finally come. I needed to show Mamor that I had proved him wrong. I had done the impossible. And no, it's totally not because I have too much free time. So I hit the call button, nervously awaiting what would come out on the other end. Would I be able to prove him wrong? Or was he truly right that some things are just impossible to do? Well, this is what happened. Where's the hard part, Cobb? I could beat this, bro. Like, what? Also, nice one copying the Sputniks effect, you unoriginal bitch. Looks like, you're, it looks like you're spamming a lot more now, like almost getting to inhuman levels, but honestly, this is still not harder than Slaughterhouse. Your level is mid as fuck. Copied the effect from Sputniks. I got 40% on that shit. That shit's not top one. I haven't even beaten Bloodbath. Your boy got fucking 5% on Bloodlust, but 40% on this, and you're calling that shit top one. That shit's not top one. That's top zero, bitch. Nah, these frame perfects are literally impossible. This might be harder than Slaughterhouse. While the level could be optimized by one or two objects, this is probably still the best top 1 level in terms of enjoyability. But the fact that this level is even possible to create is groundbreaking. This level shows that nearly anything can be achieved if you really try. But do you know what else is groundbreaking? How I managed to make a level beneath the ground in Geometry Dash. That's right, some of the techniques I used to make that video possible are insane. So find out here.